Hello, I'm Nito Cobain. Welcome to Side by Side. My guest today changed the way we order pizza. That's right. He was hired as the chief marketing officer at Domino's Pizza. He led the reinvention of the world's largest pizza chain. And today he is Domino's president and chief operating officer. We're talking about big brands, technology, and transformation with Mr. Russell Wiener. Funding for Side by Side with Nito Cobain is made possible by... Here's to those that rise and shine, to friendly faces doing more than their part, and to those who still enjoy the little things. You make it feel like home. Ashley Home Store. This is home. The Bud Group is a company of everyday leaders making a difference by providing facility solutions through customized janitorial, landscape, and maintenance services. Coca-Cola Consolidated is honored to make and serve 300 brands and flavors locally. Thanks to our teammates. We are Coca-Cola Consolidated, your local bottler. So welcome to Side by Side. I'm glad to see you here. Did you bring some Domino's gift cards with you? I do. We got a bunch of pizza in the back, but only if you ask me easy questions. Okay. Or you're allowed to eat it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, listen, you, you, you have literally changed the way um, pizza is served. At Domino's, you are the largest chain, still the largest chain. Yeah, yeah. And it is all over the world? All over 90 countries, all over the world. More than 90 countries? Yeah, more than 90 countries. How many, how many Domino's stores? Oh, over 18,000. 18,000 yeah. of them. Yeah, more than that. Yeah. I remember when Domino's was started. I remember <laughs> Mr. Monahan. I'm a customer of Domino's. And I, I, you're really not in the pizza business, are you? I mean, uh -huh. you're really in the technology business. Uh, you know, there's a, a great quote that talks about that we're a uh, pizza company, you know, wrapped up in a technology company, wrapped up in a marketing company. Mm. And I think we're a little bit of everything. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, we sell a product that other folks sell. I mean, I think we do it better than everybody on the product and on the service side of it. But still at the same time, there needs to be a, what I call a tiebreaker. So when someone's hungry, why would they pick pizza versus burgers? And when they pick pizza, why would they pick Domino's? And so you need to give people other reasons in addition to just value and, and product quality. And, and I think when people are buying Domino's today and they put that box, you know, here, let's say there was a box between us, uh, that box says a little bit about who they are. And I think people want to make sure that they make, you know, the right impression that uh, today when technology is abound and everywhere, when you put a box of Domino's there, you're not just saying that I'm buying pizza, you're saying that I know technology, maybe I ordered this via Twitter. Mm -hmm. even though I probably ordered on the phone, mm -hmm. right? And so, so, yeah, we try to give people reasons for being other than, reason for eating, I'm sorry, other than just the product and the service. Yeah, uh, but what I meant by technology, that the, the, the way the orders are taken, the way the process is made, the way the supply chain works for you, all of that yeah. has to have significant technology systems, right? Yeah. And, um, and you're the president, CEO, the chief operating officer of Domino's, What's the hardest part of your job? Um, well, we just got through a pandemic, right? And so I think the pandemic, will, it's still kind of going on, but I'll, t I'll put that aside because hopefully that's only happening once in our, in, in our lifetime. But, I, but I, did the pandemic, the pandemic should have been good for you, right? I mean, people stayed at home and they had to eat and... Certainly from a business perspective, yeah. you know, people were home and they needed delivery. Um, you know, for, for our 350,000 team members around the world, mm. it, was, it was tough. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, certainly, you're right, it's busy. Mm -hmm. It's busy when you're maybe scared to come to work. Again, this is the beginning of the pandemic, yes, yes, right? Yes. Um, when you're next to a hot pizza oven and you've got a mask on yes. and you're worried about, yes. hey, we do all the right testing, but you still, you worry. Mm -hmm. um, and probably don't have the amount of staff that you need mm -hmm. because of everything that's going Labor on. Shortages, so it's kind of understaffed, a little bit, you know, nervous during the beginning of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And um, and that really is my biggest, I don't want to say worry, it's just my biggest 
my, my biggest concern, my biggest thank you, my biggest piece of gratitude, our frontline employees are, you know, are, are at, the, at, the, at the front of whether it's the pandemic, if there's a, there were hurricanes down in New Orleans, mm -hmm. whatever, mm -hmm. we, we like to say we're the last to close yes. and the first to open. Yes. And so we're there in the service of all those who serve. Yes. And, um, in the midst of whatever in calamity. The midst of what, and, what, and we're going to be there. We're going to give the pizza yeah. away. And, and there's a big responsibility, and it lies within the communities yeah. where these frontline employees are. But, Russell, I mean, there are, gosh, there are a million pizza companies out there. Right? In any location, any city, there's so many pizza companies. One can order from here, 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 here. Many of them have caught up with the Domino's uh, technology process. In other words, you can go online, order, you can order through Uber, whatever, uh, Uber Eats, et cetera, et cetera. What is it that really differentiates Domino's besides size? Yeah. Oh, I think a lot of things. And I can get back to the technology piece in a second. But I think, you know, that what differentiates brands is a point of view. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think we have a, you know, a, a very di a different point of view than maybe a lot of restaurants do. If you, if one were to close your eyes and think of a commercial, and I know there are no commercials because we're on a public broadcasting yes. system, so we're going to have to stretch and just pretend for two seconds you're not watching uh, PBS. And if you thought um, of a restaurant commercial, you probably are thinking of, food shots and here's a new product and now now we've got mm. double pepperoni it's blah, blah, blah. and here's the price so there's no brand story the story is just about a limited time offer that frankly anyone can do and um while we launch new products you know i always talk about we try to do innovation not Spinovation, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? What spinovation is, oh, here's water. Now it's got water with lemon. Now it's water with bubbles. Now it's water with cherry. Now it's got vitamins in it. Um, real and innovation is a substantial change that allows the product to be there forever, not just, not just three months. Mm -hmm. So we try to keep our product innovation to true innovation and not spinovation. And a lot of the innovation we do is around technology. So if you're right, there are a lot of pizza companies, a lot of restaurant companies. How do we make the ordering process better? How do we make the delivery process? How do we make the customer interaction better through technology? Mm -hmm. What's our point of view? We have a tagline. It's probably not the most famous tagline. You're not going to have it at a, it's not going to be a let's do it, you know, um, um, or something that's going to be on a, on, on a hat. Um, our tagline is, oh, yes, we did. And because we approach everything that we do, mm -hmm. whereas we want people to think after they see the commercial, after they see what we've done to say, oh my God, did Domino's actually do that? Does it change their perception about the brand for a positive? Mm -hmm. And our answer to it has to be, oh yes, we did. And if the answer is an oh yes, we did, we don't do it. And so that's, the, oh yes, we did moments are things we try to create. And I think, you know, that's what we do in pizza. I think that's what companies need to do in general. Right? There's, there's a sea of sameness everywhere. You know, today, um, there's a lot of doubt in, there's always been doubt in brands, but there's doubt kind of throughout kind of society. So if, if, if actions speak louder than words, and so what can you do to change the frame of what people think about your brand and have them raise their hand so they want to be associated with the brand? So when the, when the box is here between us versus another box, it's not just because the food is great. You know, I eat the pizza as long as it's hot and tasty right. and good, but the innovation lies in the systems that support the making of that pizza, the delivery of that pizza, and the, and the, and the service experience yes. I would have. Yeah, exactly, and, and, and they can line up really interesting. So for example, one of the things we're learn we are known for is our pizza tracker, right? Pizza tracker tells you who's making your pizza, tells you who put it in the oven, who's checking your pizza, who's delivering your pizza. Now that originally was a system. We have a point of sale system and everyone needs to log into their station. Mm -hmm. I'm making the pizzas today, I'm delivering the pizzas, blah, blah, blah. And that was really to help us uh, figure out, you know, who is in the store doing what and help the general manager mm -hmm. make sure what we call aces were in their places. But what we realized was well, we're gathering this information. What can we do with this information? How do we make the experience more personal with our customers? I think they want to know who's, who's coming to their house 
and delivering their pizza. Who's making their pizza? Mm. And so something that was started from an operational standpoint, we turned it inside out and made it a marketing idea. And I think that's really something I urge companies to do. There are a lot of good ideas there, but we see them as a supply chain thing or a, mm -hmm. you know, what, turn it inside out and say, I already have this thing established. Do, do I need to create something new or do I have something already that's part of my core that I can turn it inside out and I can market it mm -hmm. to the world? What did you learn all this stuff? Did you learn it at PepsiCo? Did you <laughs> served for many years? Did you learn it at Cornell, NYU? Yeah. Where did you learn it? I, uh, you know, I have an interesting- You went to Cornell undergrad, NYU grad. NYU um, while I worked, yeah, uh, uh, part-time. And you worked at PepsiCo for I worked at Pepsi about 11 years, and I've been at Domino's 13 plus. You know, the interesting thing, so I, I've started my career as in marketing. Uh, I won't bore you with the details of how I got into it, but I will tell you I graduated uh, at Cornell without ha taking marketing. <laughs> so I really, um, I feel like what I... Did you, what was your undergraduate degree? Well, I changed a few times. Yes. <laughs> was that because you were an excellent student and you were exploring, or did you have difficulty in that? No, the well, subject. you know, I think at least when I grew up, you, you kind of were supposed to know what you wanted to do when you were, you know, mm -hmm. in the second trimester, maybe. <laughs> and so I always thought I was going to be a doctor. And, um, you know, went to, went to school, did okay in that area, but it was clear that there were other people around me who were, who were meant for that and, and not me. And well, so, you're a doctor. You're a doctor and, of pizza. Yeah, right? maybe. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, so on my list, right, if you're not a doctor, you're a lawyer. So we didn't have a big, I didn't have a big purview, you mm -hmm. know, back then. And so I ended up being a political science major and was going to go to law school, but I uh, had an internship and I just didn't enjoy the internship. I had done some reading and I don't know if this is true. I wish I could remember the article, but it said something like, if the rate of people becoming lawyers increased at the rate it had been, at least my three or four mm. years coming out of school, something like by the year 2050, everyone in the world would be a lawyer. <laughs> so I said, okay, I have to figure out something that I, I really want to do. And I just got lucky um, at the last minute being exposed to uh, a friend of mine who was in a marketing class who asked for help with a project. So it was senior week, I was done. He had a couple finals and he said, hey, can you help me with this paper? And it was, he was a marketing major. Mm. So I said, okay, you know, I'll help you. And I, I did help him with his paper and I, I felt like, oh my God, this is what I want to do. I'd already graduated college. Mm -hmm. And um, so to make a short story long, you know, not everyone wants to, I don't care where you go to school, they don't want to hire you if you haven't majored in something. And so I started as, uh, you know, entry level. What, what was your first job? Uh, well, it's a long story. Uh, actually, what I did at first is I, I went abroad for a year uh, to Israel. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had an internship with the government and I worked in marketing for a, for a little magazine because I wanted, to get, um, I wanted to get some marketing experience. But I went there, one is I wanted to kind of see the world, but two, I wanted to escape the pressure of my parents who said, hey, you said you were going to go to law school. <laughs> but I came back and, and uh, started, you know, from the bottom in an advertising agency, worked my way up and, you know. Um, the, what is it that you tell um, your children or what is it that you tell young uh, enterprising uh, associates at Domino's or before that at Pepsi that can propel them forward in life? Yeah. Um, I two themes. The first one, we're, we just went through my circuitous route to mm. figure out what I wanted to do. And so many people feel, I know I have a lot of friends, I'm sure you do as well, where they decided what they were going to do when they were you know, younger in life mm -hmm. and they stuck with it um, and they're not happy. Mm. And I think people are um, always feel the pressure to choose. And what they should realize is that if you actively check things off the list, actively, that's just as good as figuring out what you want to do. Mm. And I actively... Is that a process of elimination? Yeah, is that, and yeah. As long as you're not sitting back, you know, watching television saying, come to me, job. You're saying, okay, this is, this is something I'm going to do, spend as much time doing this as I am, probably more time sleeping and mm. with my family. Mm -hmm. So I got to love it. And if you love it, I don't care what it is, mm -hmm. you can do it forever. And it may not come to you right away, and it's okay. 
it's when, when, when your friends are getting the jobs that are getting paid twice as much as you and your parents are saying, why are you still living at home? And as long as you are responsibly checking something off the list is as good as putting something on the list. That's one. Kind of, you speak the truth. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, if, if you love what you do, it's really not work. It's, yeah. it's, you, you can't wait to get there. You, you, you give it all you've got. You perform at a higher level of excellence and, and so on. Um, it, it, looking back over your life, can you think of a mistake, a singular mistake that you made that when you found out what it meant, it became a productive failure, a productive mistake? You know, so many people, for example, succeed in life, yeah. but they don't know what caused that success. Therefore, they cannot replicate it. I call that a non-productive success. You did it, you're successful, but you can't replicate it, you can't teach it, you can't coach somebody else in it. Yeah. But when you have a mistake, we feel this adversity or this mistake, yeah. but out of it can emerge enormous abundance, new yeah. learning, new exploration. Was there something, a, a turning point in your life that was like that? Um, I'm sure I'll think of something better after this. Um, but it, it was kind of what I was, I, I, it was an almost mistake. Um, you know, so when I talk about checking things off the list, I was all in, like I said, I was pre-med. My first, um, advanced pre-med exam at, at Cornell. This is when, you know, when you get the grades and they print them off on the little, mm. this is before the internet, and you go up and you look at your grades, and you know, I was, had a triple check because I got a, a 43 on my, now it turned out a 43 was a, was a B, <laughs> but I wasn't used to getting Bs. Um, 43 and, was a B? Yeah, because they curve it, yeah, and I you see. know, okay. it's, it's, it's a whole long, I could yeah. talk to you all day about curves. Um, but I remember thinking, yeah, because I had done things my whole life. I, there's a publication I'm part of in the Journal of Biological Chemistry. I was going to do this. And then you're sitting there with your, with your B, even though you studied so much. Mm -hmm. And you're saying, wow. It, so yeah. what's the lesson out of yeah. that? Yeah. Well, and then the, the, the second one was I gotten into law school when I went from, you know, mm -hmm. to law school. And um, you were admitted into. I was school. admitted. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and um, you know, you know. So when I say when I say mistake is is, you know, I just went so far down these areas. But by by kind of keeping my eyes open, like I talked to you about before, about yeah. this whole idea of checking things off the list, it's easy to look back and yeah, then tell found that a story new opportunity. and I'll tell the story. But yeah. you know. You can make mistakes trying to figure out what you want to do. Yeah. The question is, when you've made that mistake, you don't look back and say, ah, I just spent yeah. four years of Cornell tuition doing these two things. That's in your rearview mirror. That's some mm -hmm. cost. It's, it's what do I do next? Was there a moment in your life when you came up with an idea or you, you activated a strategy yeah. of, of promotion and marketing uh, that you look back on and say, that was my aha moment. Yeah. I, I was really pretty genius with that, and I was acknowledged for it. Was there such a moment? What was it? Well, first of all, there's never an I, and anyone who thinks there's an always I who did something, there's yeah. always a teamwork. Um, but I can tell you that I was part of something that I feel honored to be a part of. When we, um, at the end of 2009 and early 2010, we launched a campaign for Domino's. So Domino's has been around since 1960. Um, and the three years before I got there, sales were negative. Our, our stock was, you know, ended up being below $3. And um, looked at a lot of the research and our product wasn't in a good place, and nor was our brand. And in fact, if you put our product in someone else's box, they would think it would taste better and vice versa. So we had a product problem and a brand it's a problem. Perception. It was perception. And so it was clear to me, well, I remember telling the team is, we have to do 10 years of marketing in one year. And so we knew we had to fix the pizza, and when, you know we did. But the question was, what it, what's going to do? Ten? We didn't have time to be up one or two percent. And and so. So how does one do that? This is a fascinating yeah. comment. We have to do ten years of marketing in one year. That was yeah. a sense of urgency. Yeah. We got to go to market quickly, or we're going to lose this game. Um, how does one do that with 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 larger supply of intense? Advertising? Is it uh, finessing the arguments and the messaging in such a way that has greater impact? How does one do 10 years of marketing in one year? It's not the budget. Because, you know, that's like me saying, if I did an ad saying my kids are wonderful, 
course I think my kids are wonderful. Mm. No one cares. So a brand does tons of advertising and says, oh, look at this great new pizza we mm. have. You're, you're, you're going to love it. No one's going to believe you. So mm -hmm. you have to do something that's believable and that breaks through. There's so much going on right now. And so how we come up with ideas at Domino's is we use something called tension. What's the tension in your brand and what's the tension in society? Mm -hmm. And if you figure out how to break those tensions and collide those ideas, you have a big idea. Mm -hmm. The tension back in 2009 on our brand was we were a pizza company and we had this kind of the secret, which is our pizza didn't taste very good. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there, were, there were a lot of other things that uh, during that time, tensions in culture. This was, if you remember, this is when the bailouts were happening with car companies yep. and they were flying down. Recession and, and all that. Yeah. Recession and, and um, people were losing their homes, right? And so what consumers were thinking at that point was, um, why isn't anyone telling me the truth? Why are all these people, why are all these people lying to me? What happened to the American? There was distrust, distrust in the system. So there's distrust in the world. We have this, not that we're a pizza company, right? But we had this thing about our pizza that um, we felt that, hey, you know what? If the world wants everyone to tell the truth, just somebody tell the truth. I know we're a pizza company. We're not going to solve Middle East peace. But someone's got to tell the truth, and it's going to be us. And so we didn't just go out there and say, hey, we're Domino's, trust us, we have a new pizza, try it, is we were honest and transparent and we went on TV live, you know, or, or, or shooting, you know, customers um, for the spots. And, and um, we played their feedback where they said, Domino's pizza crust tastes like cardboard. All of the things, we, play, we played it and we then, then said, because you can't just say, then you gotta do something about it. Mm -hmm. We fixed the pizza, then we did a campaign where we went to the homes of the people who said these bad things about our pizza, and they love pizza. Yeah. And so, you know, at some point... Um, but Russell, this yeah. is a big, big risk. It was a big risk? Well, you know, the stock was, I believe, $2.83 when we, you know, thought of the idea. Yeah, you were um, on your way to being delisted, um, you know, among other things. I mean, how, but how did you... What did you get the courage to go on TV and say, yeah, our product is not good? Yeah, well, um, first of all, the courage came from the data. People always say, oh, you take big risks. Don't take big risks. Jumping out of a plane looks like it's big risk, but if you have a parachute, yeah. you're okay. And so this is not about taking risk. This is taking smart, calculated, calculated moves yeah. to have a big idea. Mm. And so when we came up with the idea, it was risky, but it was based in fact. The old pizza wasn't as good as the new pizza was great. But how did you know that people will change their mind about Domino's? Well, so what we did was we created this campaign, um, actually a few different, uh, few different ads talking about it. And what we did before we ran them is we tested them. So a lot of people, I've been in marketing most of my life. Sure. And you, the, it, it runs so fast, you get the ad out and you don't even know until yeah. it hits. This was such a big risk that we, created a couple spots and we created a backup spot. Mm -hmm. And when, we, when the ad scores came back, it turns out it was the highest scoring restaurant spot in history, at least up till that point, we knew we had something. But if it didn't, we had a backup. You had a backup. And so that's what you gotta do. Sure. You, get, you gotta, sure. yeah. Yeah, what's the worst thing that can happen? Are we ready for it? Yeah. Um, you know, I could talk to you for hours yeah. because you're, you're uh, clearly um, versed in this whole yeah. concept of marketing and branding and really positioning a product in a very busy, very competitive, uh, really global marketplace yeah. in, all, in which we all reside. When you hire people, what are the three things you look for? Just name them for me. What are the three characteristics you look in a person? Yeah. Um, well, things that you want to see for, from s somebody new, and maybe it's just me, I love my diverse background. I think I'm good at what I, decent at what I do in business, you know, because I did all of these other mm -hmm. things. And so I really look at to see what are the experiences they had see. throughout their life. And, you know, some people come straight to it. A lot of folks have these circuitous roots and I embrace, yes. you know, both of those Great. because you bring everything, you bring everything with you. Um, you know, the, the interpersonal skills are so important. Of course. Um, because, you know, you hire people as individual contributors mm -hmm. starting in their career. Mm -hmm. 
but then they become enterprise leaders. And if you can't take other what, others with you, you're an individual, and there are places for individual contributors, but if you're hiring leaders, you need to see that. Absolutely. I think the third thing, and you don't really see this, but you, you get this in the, you know, in the interview process, is you know, um, how they lead. Their right. style of leadership. Their style, and you can yeah. get that through folks that you, that you talk to, sure. um, and particularly within the, the leadership, I don't think enough, I mean, I'm talking to the expert here, mm. but platform skills. Are so important yes because if you if you need to take others with you whether it's your whether your employees mm -hmm. whether it's the stock connecting market, with people right connecting, connecting with people yeah. and getting up there and yeah well you connect very well <laughs> my friend and it's a pleasure having you with me side by side yeah. thank you Russell Wiener president and CEO of Domino's for being with me and uh, best wishes and I'm looking for that gift certificate in the mail thank uh, you for uh, being here you Russell I appreciate Good to it. Have you. take care Funding for Side by Side with Nito Cobain is made possible by... Here's to those that rise and shine, to friendly faces doing more than their part, and to those who still enjoy the little things. You make it feel like home. Ashley Home Store. This is home. The Bud Group is a company of everyday leaders making a difference by providing facility solutions through customized janitorial, landscape, and maintenance services. Coca-Cola Consolidated is honored to make and serve 300 brands and flavors locally. Thanks to our teammates. We are Coca-Cola Consolidated, your local bottler.